Hi there, I'm Edwin Palmer. Welcome to my IQ series. In this video, we're gonna go back more than a hundred years and take a look at the history of IQ tests. So let's start this journey back in time. The English statistician Sir Francis Galton made the first attempt at creating a standardized test for rating a person's intelligence. He was a pioneer of psychometrics and a pioneer of the application of statistical methods to the study of human diversity and the study of inheritance of human traits. He hypothesized that there should exist a correlation between intelligence and other observable traits such as reflexes, muscle grip, and head size. He thought he could determine intelligence by measuring the size of the human skull. He assumed that the larger the skull, the smarter the person. Galton set up the first mental testing center in the world in 1882 and published Inquiries into Human Faculty and its Development in 1883 in which he set out his theories. After gathering data on a variety of physical variables, he was unable to show any correlation between intelligence and traits like reflexes, muscle grip, and head size, and he eventually abandoned this research. Around the same time, scientist Wilhelm Wundt used introspection, the human ability to reflect on their own thoughts, as the measure of intelligence. Nowadays, Galton's and Wundt's methods and ideas are considered to be outmoded and are for sure no longer used for IQ tests, but they do form a fundamental part of the history of the IQ test. So let's move on to the first real IQ test. The first modern intelligence test in IQ history was developed in 1904 by Alfred Binet and Théodore Simon. The French Ministry of Education asked these researchers to develop a test which would allow for distinguishing mentally retarded children from normally intelligent but lazy children. The result was the Binet-Simon IQ test. The score on this IQ test would reveal the child's mental age. The Binet-Simon IQ test consists of several components, such as logical reasoning, finding rhyming words, and naming objects. The score for the IQ test, in combination with a child's age, provides information on the intellectual development of the child. Is the child ahead of or lagging behind other children? As I told you in my previous video, the IQ was calculated as mental age divided by chronological age times 100. The test came to be a huge success, both in Europe and America. However, in Binet's view, there were limitations with this IQ test. He stressed that intelligence had a remarkable diversity, and because of that, he found it more important to study it using qualitative as opposed to quantitative measures. American psychologist Louis Terman at Stanford University revised the Binet-Simo scale in 1916, which resulted in the Stanford-Binet intelligence scales. It became the most popular IQ test in the United States for decades. This information came from these websites. You'll find these links below this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and watch this series from the start. Next Friday, I'll be back with a new video in my series on intellectual giftedness. Till then, I only want to say three things. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and bye y'all!